know that Istanbul is the world's eighth most visited city with 13 million visitors every year. It is beautiful every season, but there is undeniable magic about winter. Because Istanbul has over 50 hills and multiple bodies of water surrounding it, like Black Sea and Sea of Marmara, it has several microclimates. Unlike many European cities, Istanbul isn't a city that gets to freezing temperatures often. However, the daily mean is a few degrees above zero. Istanbul is one of the snowiest cities in the Mediterranean basin, and that is because of the cold air coming from the north. Snow does occur in the coastal areas of the Sea of Marmara and the Black Sea almost every winter but it usually lies no more than a few days. Suppose you're exploring outdoorsy touristic spots like Istiklal Street. There are many warming street foods and drinks available, such as roasted chestnuts, boiled corn, a cup of tea or salep. They will keep you warm even when you are way up on the Galata Tower. Stretching for one and a half kilometers is Stiklal Street, the Turkey's most famous and busiest street. And it's home not only to many shops, but also cultural sites that are delight to explore. Winter season in Istanbul is considered off-season. And as with many destinations in the off-season, it's much cheaper. While grocery prices, restaurants and transportation costs are the same. Prices for hotel stays, Airbnbs, airfares and some excursions drop significantly. In my previous videos, I talked more about Istiklal Street and Galata Tower. But I would like to emphasize again that it's one of the oldest watchtowers in the world. Originally, it was built in the 6th century, but the one we see today was rebuilt in the mid-14th century by the Genoese, who colonized this part of the city. Very good holiday, buy good fishes for you. The original church of Sant'Antonio of Padua was built in 1725 by the Italian community of Istanbul, but was later demolished and replaced by the current building which was constructed on the same site. It is run by the Italian priest and there are regular masses in Italian, Polish, English and Turkish. Visiting Istanbul in winter means you can see the sights without waiting in line for too long. Dalmabacha Palace is a tourist hotspot, and while you have to wait in lines for hours in the summer months, there is hardly any wait in winter. 
Dalmabacha Palace was built in the mid-19th century by the Empire 31st Sultan Abdul Majid. Previously, the Sultan and his family had lived at Topkapi Palace, but as the medieval Topkapi was lacking in contemporary style, luxury and comfort as compared to the palaces of the European monarchs, Abdul Majid decided to build a new modern palace. The construction cost was 35 tons of gold, the equivalent $1.9 billion in today's values. The palace was home to six sultans until 1924, when the ownership of the palace was transferred to the national heritage of the new Turkish Republic. Dalmabacha translates field and garden, and it's the largest palace in Turkey. It has an area of 45,000 square meters and contains 285 rooms, 46 halls, 6 hammams and 68 toilets. The design contains eclectic elements from Baroque, Rococo and Neoclassical style, blended with traditional Ottoman architecture to create a new synthesis. The palace is extensively decorated with gold and crystals. 14 tons of gold were used to glit the ceilings. Over 100 kilos of gold were used to decorate the palace. Functionally, the palace retains elements of traditional Ottoman palace life and also features of traditional Turkish homes. It's strictly separated in the southern wing, the quarters reserved for men containing the public representation rooms, and the northern wing, the harem, serving as the private residential area of Sultan and his family. The two functional areas are separated by the big ceremonial hall with a floor area of 2,000 square meters and a 36 meters high dome. The harem was a traditional feature of many Middle Eastern architectural structures throughout history. The point of Abdul Mijid construction of the harem was to ensure there were separate quarters built for the royal family and their leisure. It was common practice for the Sultan's personal concubines to reside within the harem. Rooms meant to house and educate the children of the Sultan as well as the sultan owned living quarters are included in what would be considered the harem. Usually, most sultans beforehand had restricted their wives and concubines from being on the public. However, Abdul Majid unpredictably allowed them to leave the palace to shops and bazaars under supervision. If you enjoyed watching this video, I encourage you to subscribe, click like and hit notification bell button to get updated of the new releases.